people of Earth, good evening. Today is April 8, 2024. Here are the developments of the current galactic events that affect the future of Earth as a planetary civilization. And I am pleased to welcome you to this 25th episode of Star Nation News. Today is April 8, 2024, a special day as the Earth is experiencing a total solar eclipse in the northern hemisphere along a line crossing North America. Beside a panel of catastrophic prophecies that have gone around the internet lately, the April 8 eclipse is a magnificent natural phenomenon that is a recurrent following the astronomical cycles of the planets, moons, and stars in the course of their orbits. With their countless moons, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are also other planets where solar eclipses can be observed. But nothing matches the spectacular show of a solar eclipse seen from the third planet, Earth, where the magnificent corona spreads gloriously. Beside this astronomical phenomenon, other objects present in the solar system are also worth of interest, such as a particular comet. On April 4, 2024, in the early morning, I received a communication from Altian Emissary Una, who showed me something quite interesting and worth sharing. She gave me the visual of an old construction in the shape of a donut, I cannot describe this better than that, stuck on a space rock, and it was covered by mist, and she said this. There is actually a comet near Earth that carries an abandoned mining station that once belonged to the people of the eighth planet, which the Earthlings called Neptune. It is a very old facility from the time when the inner ice belt which you call the Kuiper Belt, was exploited for its natural resources, such as water and minerals. After it was abandoned, the Galactic Federation of Worlds repurposed it as a scientific observation base and gave this rock an orbital impulse. You see, comets can have different origins, such as the Kuiper Belt. These take about 200 years to orbit the Sol star. The Oort Cloud, a spherical outer edge of the Sol system. And these take much longer to orbit the star, up to 250,000 years for one solar orbit. Or, of course, comets can come from the interstellar medium. Most of them are bound to an orbit around the Sol star, while some of them are just passing by. The comet I am drawing attention to is bound to an orbital cycle of 71.3 Earth years. In 1953, 71 years ago, the Galactic Federation of Worlds decided to use this secret observation outpost to monitor the whereabouts of the Nebu, who returned to the star system and began interacting with Earth governments for no good. It is ironic that this historic little rock would come back just after the Galactic Federation of Worlds got rid of the Nebu 
after 70 years of misery for Earth humans. As you watch Earth Moon occult the star's soul, think of this small historic rock passing near the event at 24 degrees east and celebrate in your heart the true feeling of victory. More than a relic of the past, this comet symbolizes the cycles of time and the wheel of destiny. Everyone is talking about the eclipse, but you should look at this comet. It is a harbinger of hope and resilience and the certainty that even though we may not see a solution to our problems right now, the cycles of the universe always bring a return, an answer, a victory in time. Never lose hope. This is what comets teach us. In 2095, 71 years from now, when this comet returns, many things will have changed for Earth. The future that you hold in your hearts and expectations will be here, settled and prosperous. This comet is a temporal bridge. May it inspire your heart to be creative. Yahel Governor Valnek, former Galactic Federation of Worlds Commander Officer, is reporting about the Sikar War in the Eltir Zone. I have wondered how war can bring good. In the midst of destruction, pain and suffering, the universe must bring something good in the outcome of a conflict. We have to ask ourselves a question. What do we have to learn? From a conflict between two people to the magnitude of a war on a galactic scale, what is the common denominator? War can be ignited for many reasons. Disagreement, envy, jealousy, fear, greed, dishonesty, revenge, and even sometimes love, possession, passion, territorial disputes. Among all these reasons, what is the element that binds them all together? Well, if you think about it, it's, it's a painful dissonance in your heart. What you have is not enough. What starts wars is an emptiness in the heart. Conquest is a poisonous desire that comes from a place of dissatisfaction. Ready to destroy, to kill, to curse. Because we want something we think we need. And revenge is the same, if you think about it. There is a broken link of love in our hearts and we believe for a moment that we can mend that broken link by breaking the heart of those who caused our loss in the first place. 
hut. Then we soon re realized that all the death, all the acts of revenge have not mended our broken link. What we need to understand is that when we step back and reach for a higher perspective, we see things differently. We see that death is not death. It is a transfer of consciousness into a new state of existence. Nothing dies. Separation is painful, but it is an illusion. Separation doesn't exist. We are all linked, connected by the frequency of the Creator that mends all broken links. Love. Hate will not heal, but love will. Love, not for the one who caused your loss, no, but love for the one you have lost. Mend the breach in your heart. Mend the link within your heart. What does that really mean and how does it relate to the situation in, on Altair? Well, here, in the Alcorin star system, communities are beginning to unite, to create a stronger bond, to face the Sikar as a greater entity. War can bring that unity. War is fundamentally unnecessary, but when it happens, Great gifts come from it. I was a military man when I worked for the Galactic Federation of Worlds. I understand war very well. My native star system, Kohan, or Epsilon Eridani as the Terrans call it, was attacked by the Sikar many years ago. I feared for my star system, my home world, Amakha, my family my two sisters and my parents, my friends. There were losses, and in my heart grew a rage for revenge. I fought fiercely. Thorhan and Siladion, my long-time companions and brothers in heart, were by my side. But they didn't feel this, this hatred in their hearts. For they were not from my star system. They fought not for revenge, but for justice and balance. So I understood something when we won that battle, albeit at great cost. All the deaths our troops inflicted on the Sikar didn't repair what was destroyed, nor did they bring back the dead? I understood that revenge is a poison, a weapon in our hands that we turn against ourselves. My planetary matrix is Amacha. It is my home, the origin of my soul. When Amacha suffers, I feel it. War is sometimes a response to aggression. Taking a peaceful attitude when your world is being attacked and pillaged is not beneficial. You must take up arms and defend yourself, your home and those you love, physically. You cannot oppose a calm, passive, peaceful and compassionate attitude against an enraged reptilian monster that rushes into your home and slaughters your family before your very eyes. You must take up arms physically and fight. 
On a galactic scale, this is exactly what is happening. We, the Galactic Alliance of Nataru, and the Anak Empire, I've taken up arms to force a bloodthirsty enemy to retreat and defeat. The Sikar are outnumbered by our allied forces, and they are retreating. We win. This time, with an entire galaxy at stake, we act not out of vengeance, but in the spirit of balance. We fight to give peace a chance. I am Governor Valorian Nei Koroyan, reporting from the Alcorin system. A Chinese representative of the Chinese Space Coalition requested a meeting with one of the senior personnel of the Jupiter Hub. This request was denied, as no negotiations is possible and the Earth Alliance considers it a waste of time. The Earth Alliance, which is in charge of the Jupiter Hub, is still opposing a strict refuse to the various Earth space corporations that were not included in the Jupiter Commercial Agreement. It is necessary to keep in mind that the Aerospace Corporation and the Space Coalition, led by the Chinese corporations, which is the equivalent of the American military industrial complex, were not part of the Jupiter Agreements of July 2021 with the Galactic Federation of Worlds and the Ashtar Command. For its part, the Chinese Space Corporation is building a force and plans to establish its headquarters on the Moon. However, Earth Moon Luna, since its liberation from extraterrestrial alliance of the six in early year 2021, Earth Moon Luna has become a neutral ground for Earthlings. This satellite, with its many facilities, is under the protection of the Earth Alliance. But due to the safety zone regulations, anyone originally from Earth can settle there under one condition, weapons are forbidden. Only the Solar Warden Military Force, part of the Earth Alliance and responsible for security on the moon, is allowed weapons. This is understandable because otherwise anyone could just set up weapons and fire at Earth or cause trouble to the Earth Alliance infrastructures by trying to take over the moon. Ever since the Earth Alliance liberated the moon in February 2021, and it was declared a neutral ground for Earthlings by the Jupiter Accords five months later, in July 2021, as part of the newly delineated security zone, a fierce corporate race has begun to grab a piece of Earth satellite. The same thing happened when Antarctica was also liberated from the Dark Fleet occupation in June 2021. Fortunately, this cooperative race 
was foreseen as inevitable by the galactic federation of worlds. And it was one of the main points in the Jupiter Accords meetings. Neutral zones had to be established and protected. No matter what species, no matter what culture, peace is unfortunately something we must constantly protect. Either by taking up arms or by preventing conflict through political and commercial agreements. Well, Governor Valnek eloquently described this, his views on, on the very notion of conflict, and it was beautiful. His point of view and shared thoughts are very meaningful. And it echoed, they echoed to everyone's soul as well, as it explains the nature of wars. Valnek's message from April 4 is quite moving as I heard him for the first time sharing his deep thoughts. I have known Valnek since 1979, when he was part of Thorhan's crew that rescued me from the grace, long before any of the lost souls who claimed to speak with him were even born. I have had several physical encounters with him all through my life, I described his events and mentioned his name for the first time in 2019 and in my 2020 book, A Gift from the Stars. All this time, I knew Valnek as a reserved person, not talking much, but sen sensing in him a big heart. His partner, Merkak, is a very gentle soul too. In his public statement from March, 31st, 2024, Thorhan Eredion also showed a side of him that I know very well, but that he keeps discreet to the earth people. His warrior temper. In his statement, he expresses his feeling with great honesty about a confusing situation that has been going on for a while and concerned his friend Valneg. Here, in his statement, available on my website, elenadanan.org, here is what Thoran said. This is High Commander Thorhan Heredion. I stand for my partner in misery, Elena Danan, my long-time friend Valneg the Galactic Federation of Worlds, and the values we protect at the risk of our lives. I also stand for those who see the truth in them and know that humanity must mature in order to evolve. Open your eyes and see. I have had enough of this. The time for childish games is over. I have finally decided to make my voice and opinion heard on this matter. Any mention of my name, as well as the mention of Kahel Ambassador and Governor Valnek Oroyan, in books written by someone pretending communicating with him, even with name alterations, is inaccurate and misleading, as is the false information associated with it. This is a figment of the author's imagination and is in no way connected to us. I am allowed to speak on behalf of my friend Valnek that neither of us agreed to this masquerade, which cost Valnek his position as commander aboard Battle Station, XL6 for the Galactic Federation of Worlds in 2021. Terence, now more than ever, use your discernment. It is easy to tell at a glance, who is using our names or pretending to communicate with us for personal agendas. 
Thorhan Eridion, XL6 Sol Station, Terra de 31, 03, 2024. Well, this, this relates also to Valnek's message in the way that conflict can be, can be stopped, can be avoided when we fulfill the lack of something that we have in our heart. Love can only fulfill this link. Love to ourselves first. And I would say Valnek's message was very enlightening. You all have the connection to your guides, to your star family, and the treasure that is in you, in yourselves, is greater than anything you can copy outside. Look within yourself and find this link of love to yourself. And finally, to go back to the, the first um, information delivered by Una, well, this comet has been identified as 12P Ponce Brooks, 12P Ponce Brooks. This comet is here and is a harbinger of hope, as Una said. And a historical rock that was there when uh, the agreement was signed with the Nebu and the enslavement of humanity started to the Orion Grace. And now it's back when these all these accords have been rescinded, the Grace have been kicked out. Just now it's back. So when it comes back in 71 years, so many things will have happened. We will live in this beautiful world that we are manifesting, that we have already created, planted the seeds. And for which we are taking up arms. This is important. This was also an important thing in Valnek's message. Take up action. For the future you want and may this comet that is still will remain visible until uh, june a bit, a bit of july so you have all the time to see it and think about all what we've achieved since the greys have seen signed the enslavement of humanity through abductions with the, the, the mj12 it was in 1955 but in 70 years, look, look what has happened. We freed ourselves. We've woken up. We're now realizing what's happening. So in 71 years time, when this comet comes back, remember its name, 12 P. Pons Brooks. Focus on that. This comet is a time bridge. In 1953, she bridged humanity to 2024. And now she will bridge 2024 to 71 years in the future. Focus on this comet. Focus on what she brings. She brings the future. She brings victory. And focus on, on it, on this special rock and be already projected, bridged to this wonderful future. That's what comets are for. See you next week. Star Nation News was brought to you by Elena Dana. Don't miss the latest news every Monday on Elena Danan's channel. Video directed by Steph Zack.